magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun Welcome to the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show for Young Children. Are you naughty or are you good? Do you do what you know you should? Do you stand up for yourself? Do you tidy up the shelf? Do you help your mum and dad? Do you do things to make them mad? Can you tell the difference from right and wrong? You'll find out if you play along. Play and play with grown-ups too. If you don't show them, they will show you. Let's have a little song from Nancy Stewart of nancymusic.com. Let's sing a song about opposites. Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me The opposite of good is bad The opposite of happy is sad The opposite of hot is cold The opposite of young is old Oh, 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 let's sing a song about opposites Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me The opposite of short is tall The opposite of none is all The opposite of old is new The opposite of many is few Oh, 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 let's sing a song about opposites Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me The opposite of heavy is light The opposite of day is night The opposite of open is close The opposite of yes is no Let's sing a song about opposites Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me The opposite of black is white The opposite of wrong is right The opposite of water is ice The opposite of mean is nice Let's sing a song about opposites Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me The opposite of fast is slow The opposite of stop is go The opposite of near is far The opposite of easy is hard Oh, 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 let's sing a song about opposites Two things as different as they can be Yeah, let's sing a song about opposites You can sing along with me Or not You can sing along with me You got it You can sing along with me There was a tree Prettiest little tree that you ever did see. Well, the tree was in a hole, the hole was in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now, in that tree, there was a nest. 
the prettiest little nest that you ever did see. Well, the nest was in the tree, the tree was in the hole, the hole was in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now in that nest there was an egg, the prettiest little egg that you ever did see. Well, the egg was in the nest. Nest was in the tree, the tree was in the hole, and the hole was in the ground. The green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now on that egg, there was a bird, the prettiest little bird that you ever did see. Well, the bird was on the egg. The egg was in the nest. The nest was in the tree, and the tree was in the hole. The hole was in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now on that bird, there was a wing, the prettiest little wing that you ever did see. Well, the wing was on the bird. The bird was on the egg. The egg was in the nest. The nest was in the tree. The tree was in the hole. The hole was in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now on that wing, there was a feather. The prettiest little feather. That you ever did see? Well, the feather was on the wing, the wing was on the bird, the bird was on the egg, and the egg was in the nest. The nest was in the tree, and the tree was in the hole. The hole was in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Now on that feather, there was a bug. The prettiest little bug that you ever did see. Well, the bug was on the feather, the feather was on the wing, the wing was on the bird, and the bird was on the egg. The egg was in the nest, and the nest was in the tree. The tree was in the hole, and the hole was in the ground. And the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. Yes, the green grass grew all around, all around. The green grass grew all around. It's that time of the day again. It's nature time. I don't know why I said it like that, but hey. In this part of nature time we are going to talk about a bird that i really really do love i love all birds but i do love the magpie magpies can be very naughty but let's talk about magpies magpies are bold noisy birds that have many calls they belong to a group of birds called songbirds. However, their voices are rather harsh sounding. Like their relatives, the crows, magpies are known for their intelligence. They are super smart. For instance, magpies hide objects and then remember where to find them again. And did you know they also recognize themselves in front of the mirror? People often keep these birds as pets, which I never knew. These birds build nests in tall trees. However, they need open grasslands nearby for, feed for feeding. And that's why I see a lot of magpies, because we're near an open grassland. 
Thus, they are often found at the edges of forests. Magpies eat many different kinds of food. They eat insects, dead animals, fruit, seeds, and even the eggs and chicks of other birds. When magpies have too much to eat all at once, they stash food away to eat later. The spirit of the magpie is here to show us what is right and what is wrong when we choose what to do. And let's hear an old story about a magpie. This one is called Why the Magpie's Nest is Not Well Built. Why the Magpie's Nest is Not Well Built. A long time ago, all the birds met together to talk about building nests. Every Indian has a wigwam, said the robin, and every bird needs a home. Indians have no feathers, said the owls, and so they are cold without wigwams. We have feathers. I keep warm by flying swiftly, said the swallow, and I keep warm by fluttering my wings, said the hummingbird. By and by we shall have our little ones, said the robin. They will have no feathers on their wings, so they cannot fly or flutter, and they will be cold. How shall we keep them warm if we have no nests? Then all the birds said, We will build nests so that our little ones will be warm. The birds went to work. One brought twigs, one brought moss, one brought leaves. They sang together merrily, for they thought of the little ones that would sometime come to live in the warm nests. Now the magpie was lazy, and she sat still and watched the others at their work. Come and build your nest in the reeds and the rushes, cried one bird, but the magpie said no. My nest is on the branch of a tree, called another, and it rocks like, like a child's cradle. Come and build beside it. But the magpie said, No. Before long, all the birds with the magpie had their nest built. The magpie cried, I do not know how to build a nest. Will you not help me? The other birds were sorry for her and answered, We will teach you. The blackbird said, Put the twigs on this bough. The robin said, Put the leaves between the twigs. And the hummingbird said, Put this soft green moss over it all. I do not know how, cried the magpie. We are teaching you, said the other birds. But the magpie was lazy, and she thought, If I do not learn, they will build a nest for me. The other birds talked together. She did not wish to learn, they said, and we will not help her any longer. So they went away from her. Then the magpie was sorry. Come back, she called, and I will learn. But by this time, the other birds had eggs in their nests, and they were busy taking care of them, and had no time to teach the lazy magpie. This is why the magpie's nest is not well built. I never knew that the magpie <laughs> is really clever. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that was why the magpie's nest is not well built because they're that naughty and that clever that they just are just so naughty and i'll tell you i don't know if i have time to tell you but i really want to tell you that my neighbor's cat i've got a cat but my neighbor has a cat my neighbor's cat is kind of a wild cat and he killed a magpie we had a family of magpies living on our property and he killed one of them and the noise that that magpie made I'm still traumatized by it but that's what cats do and that's how birds live and that's part of nature let's play some more amazing music no, let's hear the magpie sound. Let's hear what a magpie sounds like.
You hear that? Have you ever heard a magpie before? Have you seen a magpie before? They're quite common in Europe, New Zealand, Australia. I don't know about everywhere else. Whoa. Whoa. Getting closer. There we go. I love magpies. I love all the cheeky birds out there. Let's hear some music by Nancy Stewart from nancymusic.com. Every birdie has a song to sing. Every birdie has a song to sing. You hear it singing all day long, for a birdie has to sing his song. Every birdie has a song to sing And every baby has a song to sing Every baby has a song to sing And though it won't have any words It's the sweetest song you've ever heard Every baby has a song to sing Every mother has a song to sing Every mother has a song to sing A song for singing when it's light And a lullaby to sing at night Every mother has a song to sing Every daddy has a song to sing Every daddy has a song to sing You hear him holler out a song or humming quietly along Every daddy has a song to sing Every grandma has a song to sing Every grandma has a song to sing And when she sings her song to you Then it becomes your song too Every grandma has a song to sing Every grandpa has a song to sing Every grandpa has a song to sing A song of happiness or strife A song he's carried all his life Every grandpa has a song to sing Everybody has a song to sing Everybody has a song to sing when we're singing the same song You know we just can't do it wrong Everybody has a song to sing And when we're singing the same song You know we just can't do it wrong Everybody has a song to sing Everybody has a song to sing
Hey, guess what? Before there was TV, there was just radio. And before there was radio, well, there wasn't radio or TV. But before there was TV, people just had to listen to stories. Well, obviously music as well, but we're talking about sharing information. And here's an old... Well, it's basically stories about trees or information about trees for, for children. And I want to play you this because it's very old. And this is the kind of thing they would use to teach the young kids out there. So this is very interesting. And this is about the walnut tree, which is a super smart tree. So let's listen while we still have time right now. Let's go. The Walnut The walnut tree comes to us from sunny Italy and France, where it has grown for many centuries and is greatly prized. Its Latin name, Joglans, means the nut of Jove, and the Romans called it so because they thought the fruit was worthy to set before their chief god, Jove. It was brought to this country about 500 years ago and seems to have been grown in many districts until the beginning of last century, when there came a great demand for its wood. As much as six hundred pounds was given for a single walnut tree, and at once all the people who had walnut trees cut them down and sold them. This greatly reduced the number. It is a large, handsome tree which grows to a considerable height and has a very thick trunk covered with grey bark. This trunk is smooth when the tree is young, but turns rugged as it grows older. The walnut branches are large and spreading. They're sometimes twisted, but the tips of each branch always turn to the sky. For long, it was thought to be dangerous to sleep beneath the shade of a walnut tree, but for what reason I have not been able to discover. The leaves are very handsome. Each leaf is made up of several pairs of leaflets placed opposite each other on a central stalk, with a single leaflet at the end. When they first come out, these leaflets are dull red, but the colour soon changes to a pale olive green, and each leaf is smooth and soft, and has a delicious scent if crushed ever so slightly. The twigs which carry these leaves are very stout, even to the tips, but they break easily, and you will find many lying on the ground after a windy night. The bark on these young twigs is very smooth and glossy. The walnut tree produces two kinds of flowers, which are both found on the same tree, and one kind, the stamen flowers, requires a whole year to ripen. If you look at the twigs which support the leaves, you will see several tiny cone-shaped buds, dotted here and there on either side, close to the scars left by last year's leaf stalk. These are the beginnings of next year's stamen flowers, and they remain like that all summer and all winter until the following spring. Then the bud lengthens and becomes a slender, drooping catkin. This catkin is covered with small flowers, each made up of five green sepals, enclosing many stamens. These stamen catkins drop from the tree when the pollen dust is scattered. The walnut seed flowers are so small that they require to be looked for carefully. They grow among the leaves at the end of the twig, and their small seed vessels, each with a closely fitting calyx covering, are ready before the leaves come out. Very soon the small seeds develop into smooth green fruits, which continue to grow all summer, and in July they're the size of a small plum. This fruit is a nut, the famous walnut, and at first you will not see in it any likeness to the walnut which we eat at dessert after cracking the pale brown shell. But look more closely, the green fruit is a soft, juicy envelope, which conceals a large nut. This green envelope turns brown when it is ripe and splits open, showing the nut inside, a nut with a crinkled skin which is soft and green at first, but which becomes a hard, pale, brown shell when the fruit dries. It is the kernel of this nut, which we eat with salt as a dessert fruit. The walnuts usually ripen in October, but often they're gathered in July, before the juicy green covering has turned brown, and they're preserved in vinegar and used as a pickle. Ripe walnuts contain a great deal of oil, and the oil is much valued by artists, who mix it with their paints. It is the most liquid of all the oils, and it dries very quickly. If you look at your fingers after gathering walnuts, you'll find that they are stained a dark brown. The walnut tree contains a juice which leaves a dark stain. It's said that with this juice, the gypsies dye their skin brown, 
and it is also used to stain floors. Walnut wood is very valuable. It is light in weight and dark in color, with beautiful veins and streaks throughout. Much fine furniture is made of walnut wood, and it can be polished till it shines like satin. Today it is largely used in the manufacture of guns and rifles. You will now understand what an important tree the walnut is, as it yields fruit and oil and wood, which are all valuable. Huh? Oh! What? I must have fallen asleep. But anyway, that, <laughs> that little track about a walnut just shows how smart and clever you kids are out there. The walnut looks just like a brain. A perfect brain in every way. Both halves of the nut look the same. Because the walnut children were allowed to play. So I hope you get to go out there and play today. I hope you get to spend time in nature every day. And maybe you'll see a walnut tree. Thanks for tuning in. Bye! Bye everybody!